This video is sponsored by PCBWay. So a lot of the things that I've learned over building, quite frankly, an excessive amount of setups in the past couple of months, I've implemented into this design. And in this video, I'm taking you along in the process of how I built the thing, but also showcasing a little bit of the versatility that one of these setups offers and how you construct it, with what kind of materials you construct it, how they operate within the YouTube channel and what they allow me to, to do and maybe what they can allow you to do as well. I personally really like integrating set stand takes into setups like this, just because it offers a lot of versatility in regards to workshop related tasks. So if you have something really heavy, you can just plonk it onto the setup and lift it up a little bit to shove it onto a different desk, for example. Or if you need to increase the height between the bottom segment and the top segment, then that really lends its itself really well to like a machine that's maybe a little bit higher, for example. So the sit-stand legs that I'm 3D scanning over here are from Flexispot. I uh, used E5s and I bought these myself. This is not sponsored or anything like that. Now the size of the setup is based around trying to utilize material as effective as possible. So you can buy sheets of 60 by 120 centimeters in the store here in the Netherlands, which come pre-cut. So I'm utilizing the maximum amount of that. And the reason I'm drawing it out in CAD over here is because I have this gigantic laser cutter, which we can use to just like cut it out really accurately and cut all of the holes in the bottom as well that we need to put all of the interfacing gear into. Now, if you don't have a laser cutter, you could just do this with a jigsaw. It's absolutely not necessary. I do enjoy the look of it though, because once you put it all together, uh, glue it up and sand it down, put some blacker over that, it just looks really unique with those teeth, with the with the burnt patches over there. Once it's all dried up though, we can input those flexi spot legs and I have these M6 bolts, which actually thread into the wood. So you don't necessarily need a bolt on the other side. Now, if you'd like access to the designs, by the way, you can check those out on my Patreon page. I upload pretty much everything I make over there. So all of the 3D scans that I make, all of the designs and in the shape of 3D files, so to say, so that you can adjust it to whatever you want it to be. Now, instead of using the standard hardware that comes with the FlexiSpot legs, I bolt these directly onto that wooden component at the bottom. And to do this, you'd need some washers so, because the wood is quite soft. So if you tighten it down a little bit too much or you wiggle it a, a lot, then it just eats into the wood and eventually that causes some issues. So I put a bunch of washers around these M6 bolts and then bolted those into place. At the bottom of that, I screwed in some uh, casters. I use these heavy duty casters as they call them from Amazon. They've been working out really quite nicely and they're really quite a lot better than cheaper variants of the same one. So the reason I do this is because you have a lot more vertical space, right? You could place a 3D printer down there or filaments or any kind of other stuff. Whereas with other setups, which just have to set up legs, you can't really do much with that space at all. It seems like it's more of a workbench. You're probably standing at the setup more than you're sitting at it. Next thing I always try to integrate is power strips and a way for the power bricks of the machines that are going to be on this thing to be hidden away so that you're not like dangling a bunch of cords underneath it to actually power the machines and then when you need an extension cord, you just grab that one and then the machines don't work anymore. It becomes a whole, you know, issue. So I've 3D scanned these super cheap power plugs. I get them from the Action in the Netherlands. And I created these wooden holders a little while back, which allowed them to be flush fit into the design. So I glued them all together and then sanded down the top over there so you don't see those stains. Push them into the design and those are held in place with M6 bolts as well. In some cases I put an extra power strip in the body of the design so that we can plug all four power strips into one of them and then connect the cable to the interface that we'll create in a bit. In this case though I cut all of the wires in half and then stripped them down, connected them all together, put some heat shrink around that and that has been working out really quite nicely over the past couple of years. So in the past I just leave the power cord dangling from the setup itself but it kept getting in the way and it doesn't look that decent either. So I wanted to come up with a solution that integrates both the interfacing for you know the machines and also provide the, the power so I have these three prime power plugs which I bought off Amazon and I 3D scan those alongside these patch panel inputs I think they're called and so I have a HDMI in there and a USB-C and 3D scan those as well came up with this little plate which I sent off to the Bamboo Lab A1 you know that allows us to interface with the desk setup pretty quite quickly now if you don't have a 3D printer you can also check out today's sponsor PCBWay they offer a variety of services ranging from PCB production and assembly CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, and of course also 3D printing. And they do that with a bunch of materials that you might not even be able to print at home, so metals or maybe like transparent resin, that kind of stuff. They have an 11 year anniversary going on right now, 
with a sale that ends on the 18th of July. So definitely check them out. I'll leave a link in the description down below. Special thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. So both the three prong and the patch panel inputs are bolted into place with some M3 bolts. And at the other end of the USB-C patch panel input, I put a USB hub so that we can connect multiple machines to this thing. So we still have a gap on the other side as well, and I wanted to put the controls for the flex spot legs in that. So usually you put those in a spot where you can see them, but actually having them underneath the desk setup looks a lot cleaner as well. So I quite enjoy this and you, you're not bumping it into stuff either. In the middle of the setup, you might have seen this massive gap. That's to put all of the stuff into. So a lot of the larger hardware components like the control box for the FlexiBot legs, you know, jam it all in there. And then a 3D printed this little cover plate for it as well, which currently it screws into place, but it would have been really nice to use magnets in some way. Uh, my experience with that though is that it falls off once there's a little bit of pressure on there. So that's why I didn't do that. In terms of the build and the design, it's not that unique, but in terms of the functionality that it offers, it's really quite flexible in regards to what you can use those as a setup for. So I'll showcase a couple of combinations that might be interesting, might be, you know, give you some inspiration for your own little setup. In general, there's a lot of verticality going on with the bottom panel over there because we can put a 3D printer on that, maybe, you know, a power bank of some sort, and next to that, place a bunch of filaments, for example. On the top panel, we can place a laser engraver. In this case, we're putting the 3D scan project panel on this one. And that's really useful because it's mounted onto monitor arms. So it doesn't take up space from the desk setup itself, right? And that way we can 3D scan something, laser engrave it, and then also 3D print it on the uh, Elegoose and Cherry over there. And so in case of the 3D scanner and the laser engraver, we have to connect those to a computer, right? So both of those are connected to that port at the bottom. And we plug them into power, plug them into the computer, and immediately the entire setup is ready to go. But if we want to store it somewhere, for example, push it into a hallway, we just unplug it really quickly. And, you know, it's completely off. There's nothing that can go wrong with this thing. So those were very digital tools, but you could also put a more standard woodworking selection of tools on the setup. So, you know, put the main project panel on this thing and then put a shop rack on the bottom panel over there so that you can quickly like clean up stuff, but also it allows you to store a bunch of these boxes from the, the Bosch DIY series. And this is a setup that I utilize quite often actually with the original, you know, workbench that I built a couple of months ago. So with that shop rack underneath there, the hose is in a nice position where we can still get rid of the dust when we're sanding stuff down. The one thing this system is missing is like a mini drawer to store all of the little tools that you would need to keep the machines in working order. And I have been thinking about making side cabinets for one of these systems, but definitely let me know in the comments what you think. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it gave you some inspiration for your own builds and hopefully see you in the next one.